G'day. Um, for this one, I was thinking of doing like a two-part series on um, how to tune a posty carburetor. Um, so, so basically, a posty carburetor um, is something that attaches to the front of the engine. Um, that looks kind of like. It's got a bit of a bottom thing on the bottom, it's got a bit of a tube going into it, it's got a bit of a tube going out to it, and that all kind of connects together. And then it has a, um, a throttle cable going into it as well. Um, and it's got some little screws on the side of it, it's got some other little screws all over the joint. And what it does is basically converts, um, oh, it also has a hose that has fuel running through it. Fuel. It goes into the side of it, and basically what it does is it converts air. Um, it goes in, mixes fuel, which makes a air fuel mixture. Which the engine, so this section here bolts to the front of the engine. engine and then the other side of the engine you've got another little thing that comes out and that's your exhaust and so controlling the carburetor allows us to control how the engine runs and they're quite simple but quite fascinating little little gadgets nice and clean and so starting with I guess the fuel side of it so in the posty bike you have a big fuel tank directly under the seat um, that holds about enough for half a posty run um, or about 140 k's if you if you go on good just by just by itself and so the bottom of the thing goes into a little fuel tap um, that lets you turn the fuel on and off and then from there goes into the carburetor, which I'll just display like a big box. And so, when you've got the tap in the on position, the fuel's going to flow down just by gravity, because the seat's higher than the carburetor, into the carburetor, and then the fluid's going to be low at the start, like when you first get it going, it's going to fill up, and then it's going to reach a point where it's just happy, it's just going to stay there all the time, and if it dips below that point, it's going to take in a bit more fuel, if it gets to that point, this fuel supply shuts off. So the level inside there activates this little thing that's floating inside there. And so when that thing called the float reaches a certain point, the fuel stops. And then when the carburetor sucks up a bit of fuel, it dips down because the level reduces. And then it sucks in some more fuel. So that, that level's kind of maintained the whole time um, that the carburetor is in use. It's sort of like a starting point. And then from there, you've kind of got, it's almost two different boxes that happen from there. So there's two different distinct sections of the carburetor. So on one side of it, you've got the idle circuit. So that's kind of on all the time. So let's call this the idle. And so that's just going to run the bike without you doing anything. Um, and that's controlled by one screw. Little, little screw there. And then you've got, um, I forget what the name of it is, but basically the one that's in use when you're running the bike. Um, so then that's the sort of controlled one. So it's the one that you're controlling with the throttle. So this has got a got a throttle cable that goes into it that basically controls it um, from, from your wrist. And so with the idle circuit, and this is just talking about the fuel side of things, um, the idle circuit has... Um, a jet, which is basically an open passage, um, which if you didn't put anything in it would just suck a ridiculous amount of fuel into the engine and just flood it and it wouldn't run properly. Um, so what you have is a needle that's on a taper, so it's kind of, it looks bang, like dead straight, but what it actually is, is very finely wider at the top, 
and thinner at the bottom. What you can think of it is basically a plug for the jet. And so when it's all the way down, um, in a position where you would never set it at, so you'd, you'd screw the idle screw in all the way and that would stop it getting any fuel. Um, it's completely plugged, so that's where it's like, hard, like the jet's hard against this. So there's no space on the sides, nothing's gonna happen. So if you think about it, if that's fully blocked, not gonna get any fuel through. If you adjust the screw, so let's say we unscrew it a whole way and that's gonna let more fuel rush through, this section of the needle's going to be open and fuel is basically going to rush through this section here. Um, and that's all sort of precision controlled so you can, you know, you can change the needle, you can change the jet hole size and that's going to change the characteristics of your idle map um, and how the bike sort of runs in terms of the fuel side of things. Um, as far as the sort of control section of the carb, so the, the thing that you're sort of actuating when you're using the motorbike, um, again, that has a jet coming out of the coming out of the fuel bowl, and attached to this um, this throttle cable is a um, is a needle with a one of these guys with a um, basically like a string attached to it. So the needle goes into there, and so when you pull on the throttle, this goes up, and more fuel is going to rush through. And when you get off the throttle, this is usually fully blocked and it's basically just going to run on the idle circuit or you can adjust this as well to get it to idle nicely so if the idle jet's not quite doing it then you can adjust um, this up with another little screw so that the bike can idle nicely and then drive nicely when you're, when you're on the throttle and then that kind of covers the, the fuel circuit of it There we go, nice and clean. Perfect. And so, when you've got fuel going and the engine wants to run, obviously you're going to need air as well because what we need to make at the end, sort of, to give to the engine is an air fuel mix. So, if we've got fuel, that's awesome. Um, but what we're going to do is mix a bit of air into it as well. So, the way that works um, is when the piston is moving up and down inside the inside the cylinder. There's a piston and there's a cylinder, um, and up here you've got sort of the inlet, inlet where the carburetor is bolted to, and then you've got your exhaust coming out this way. So you should probably get rid of the air fuel section. because the way that the air sucked in is through a vacuum. So if you don't have that vacuum, you don't have air getting sucked in. You don't have air getting sucked in, you don't have an air fuel mixture. To have an air fuel mixture, you don't have an explosion. So um, this piston slides around. And so what happens is the pistons, you know, let's say it starts at the top and the exhaust is closed in this situation and it starts coming down. And so it's kind of like when you pull on a syringe, you get a vacuum and it sort of sucks your finger in if you pull on the syringe with your finger closed. And then as soon as that inlet opens, pop, the syringe sucks some air in. And so when it sucks air in through the carburetor, um, let's draw another carburetor. We've got our fuel bowl on the bottom. And so we've got our jet that connects through the fuel bowl and we've got our needle this is plumbed into here and this is fully open and so we've got a suction force through here sucking and so there's a big opening over here um, so air's going to rush through there but then air doesn't just come through here it also comes through here and that sort of suction force sucks a bit of fuel up as well. So you're sucking air through here and then you're sucking fuel out of here as well. That's all kind of mixing up and then by the time it gets to the cylinder you have an air fuel mixture. And so now that piston's at the bottom it's got a bit of air fuel mixture in there and it's going to come up 
and at just the perfect time you've got your spark plug inside the top of the cylinder here at the perfect time that's going to explode the piston's going to compress the force a bit more as everything starts to burn and explode in there and then bang and then just before it sort of yeah that's the power stroke and then hits the bottom and then that charge then all leaves and then the cycle sort of repeats and repeats and so the air sucks it in fantastic mixes with the fuel and then sucks through there you go that's looking nice and clean now fantastic ready to go again great so we know that the air is getting sucked in the fuel is getting sucked out of the carburetor it's all getting mixed up in a cylinder fantastic so what happens next so that's kind of the basics of it and then for tuning the posty bike we've got a few different things that we can do so we've got the carburetor with its holes bingo bango we've got our float with the fuel sitting inside it we've got our jets happening we've got our needles doing stuff we've got our throttle cable coming in here connecting to, to, connecting to this needle with another jet, a little screw here, a little screw here that controls these two guys. Um, you've got a throttle cable adjustment as well, but that's more just for taking slack out of the throttle cable, so it doesn't really come into it. And then we also have a flap here um, that we can control. And so what this does is you can partially block, mostly block this intake pipe. So this is the intake of the carburetor and then this is the bit that goes to the cylinder to engine awesome and so when you first start up um, like, a, like a, a fuel engine, petrol engine um, it needs to run really rich to work so it needs to be rich it needs to be fuel rich and so there's two ways we can do that, we can either increase the amount of fuel that we're sucking through or we can decrease the amount of air that we're sucking through and in the case of most engines the way that'll work is they reduce the amount of air coming through um, in small engines for like a, like a 15 second period until things warm up a little bit um, and we do that by closing the choke up so in a cold start condition we'll close the choke up so only a little bit of air can get through um, that increases the um, amount of vacuum inside here, suck more fuel through, engine runs rich um, until it can warm up and then it can run more efficiently on less fuel. So that's with the choke. So that's something we can do um, sort of to control the engine at those low temperatures uh, on cold start. Until the engine warms up a little bit then you can turn it off and then you can run the bike. So Get rid of that. Oh no, he's permanent. Anyway, do this trick. Do the old whiteboard marker over the permanent marker trick. I'll save the day. Don't want anyone to know that I've ruined my whiteboard. That'd be not cool at all. There you go. Bingo bango. So, from there, we've got the choke, and that's kind of something you can do on cold start just to get things going. From there, um, we've got this little screw here. And so, I was reading. Um, for this guy here, this little screwy here, they reckon that the basing point is, uh, like the base start point for tuning, tuning these guys is uh, 1.5 turns out, so lefty loosey 1.5 turns, kind of in, in that direction uh, as a starting point. I guess I'm kind of, the way that I've learned how to tune carburetors over the years is pretty much by ear um, and by exhaust emission. So if you're tuning this guy and the bike's warm and it's idling and it's putting out a heap of black smoke, um, you need to turn this in a little bit more. So you need to give it a bit less fuel because it's burning, it's giving too much fuel. The engine's not burning it efficiently. Um, and that's something that can change over time, different conditions, um, different states of engine wear, like how dirty the inside of the engine is, can all affect those things. So if you've got a really poorly running motorbike, expect to have to adjust that a couple of times. Assuming everything's clean, um, 
that's another thing, mine was filthy, so I ended up having to take apart the whole thing, clean every single component with carburetor cleaner, and then put it all back together again, and now it's running much better. And so I use this 1.5 tons as a starting point, um, and now, a few months later, it's running a bit rich, so I'm gonna have to readjust it at some point. But that was my starting point, as advised by a few forums and stuff, and that was, took me a while to find that bit of information, so I hope that's helpful for someone. And then, from there, um, you kind of have your, um, so that's that's kind of like um, like a idle um, mixture control, and then so for idle speed control, um, adjust this. I was adjusting this one, so idle speed control, and I pretty much just did that one by feel. Um, so idle speed control. Oh no, yeah, idle speed control. So um, that controls sort of engine speed. So this one's just mixture. Um, you know, if the engine's going to run um, lean, meaning that it runs kind of hot and doesn't put out any um, sort of black smoke, like carbon monoxide black smoke, um, or, or unburnt fuel, um, not even carbon monoxide. And then um, this one here is more for engine speed. So how fast you want the engine to run? It's basically a little friend holding the throttle open for you um, is, is what this one does. So that basically pulls this um, this throttle controlled screw up and the further that is up again, the faster the engine's gonna run. And so the way I adjusted that was on, on my particular one um, was so that because the coasty bike has an automatic clutch, um, it relies on a low engine speed to disengage that clutch. So I set it up so that the engine speed was low enough that the clutch wasn't engaged, um, meaning that the, the bike could be like idled um, in gear at a standstill um, and it wouldn't be running away from me because um, that's not fun. And also fast enough so that it doesn't stall out. So you kind of you have to sort of pick that happy medium um, where sort of kind of too fast. And the, and the bike's running away from you because you're engaging the clutch. Because the, yeah, the clutch sort of, it's on these springs and it fights these springs and the faster it goes, the more it sort of spreads out and it's kind of on this big barrel. And so when the clutch hits the big barrel, then it'll spin the, spin the back wheel effectively. Um, or too slow, and the bike will just stall out, it won't idle. So that's pretty much my basics. Um, I think tomorrow what I'll do is I'll go out to the bike and I'll run it um, and I'll sort of go through some, some fine tuning of where I'm at at the moment. It's sort of idling a bit fast at the moment and it's not starting on the choke. Um, so I think it's a bit rich. So I probably need to, I'm thinking adjust that one in a little bit um, and maybe undo that one a little bit, but start with that one, I think is what I'm gonna do. So see you tomorrow and hope that made sense.